Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We are starting our weekend right with watches and everything is for sale. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. We sell watches, but we buy what we sell and we sell what we buy. So if you're interested in trading or selling a watch, you can reach out to me. We will buy your entire collection. We pay cash, we pay fast, we walk you through the whole process. No upper limit on value paid. And we can often offer more on a trade than an outright sale of watch. So if you see something you like here, reach out to us. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. Jumping straight in, let's talk about the Rolex GMT Master II. Now, of course, the original GMT Master II of 1983 introduced the first ever Coke bezel, so it's natural that this 16710 from the late 1990s would feature the prominent Coke bezel. The watch is 40 millimeters in diameter in steel. I describe the case as probably a 7.5 out of 10, and you can see that there is some refinishing here. The lugs remain full and fairly symmetrical all the way around. Bezel and bezel insert are in excellent condition, as is the dial. The watch features 100 meter water resistance, a 48 hour power reserve, and the ability to calculate three time zones simultaneously on the dial. You can move the local hour hand independently, advance the date forward or backwards, depending on whether you're traveling east or west, pull the crown out all the way, you engage hacking seconds, and now you can set everything in sync. You can see how the 24-hour hand moves at half the speed of the 12-hour hand. Now, assuming you set that 24-hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT, you can then use the offset, the GMT offset of a destination or target time zone to calculate a third time using the 24-hour hand and the bezel's 24 hours. Inside, caliber 3185, Rolex manufacturer, chronometer certified. The watch has a oyster bracelet, and we'll demonstrate all of the specs and details. Let's get a little bit closer and take a quick look. See, it's a 78790 501B end links internally. Clasp gives up its secrets. You could see it as a period correct U code 78790. Throw this watch on my wrist. These hollow center link and hollow end link Rolex watches from the five digit era wear a lot smaller than their super case counterparts from later on. So I could recommend this watch for a wrist even as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. You can see the edges of the lugs are coming nowhere near the edge of my wrist and it's delightfully slim on the wrist. Plenty of lume, no shortage there. As you can see, this is a Luminova dial and all four hands are luminescent. Jumping from one full bracelet sports watch to another, we're going way upscale this time with the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph. This is a model that debuted in late 2022 for the 2023 model year. Now, the third generation chronograph came out in 2016, but this particular combination of 5N red gold and a wonderful lacquered blue metallic dial, this is new for 2023, having just been introduced last fall. 42.5 millimeters in diameter. It is Vacheron specified 5N red gold, which is the darkest and most intense type of rose pink or red gold. We have that lovely blue dial with a combination of a metallic polish on the dial disc and then translucent lacquer is laid on top of the polished metal. That's how you get this wonderful effect. Indices, hands, the logo, and the date frame are all solid gold and we have plenty of blue luminescent loom. The watch includes a quick release system for its bracelet and straps. Just like that, you pull the spring bar and remove the tab that attaches to the retainer on the case. The watch comes with two straps, one in leather, one in rubber, and a secondary clasp to use with those straps, and you can fit them the same way this is fit. You simply snap it right back into place. Take a look at the bracelet fully integrated. The original Overseas was designed in 1996 by Vincent Kaufman and Dino Modolo, and they were using the design rules set by the designers of the 70s, including Jörg Heisig, who designed Vacheron's 1977 reference 222. So the 222 became the overseas. Generation 1 became Generation 2, and that leads us to Generation 3, which is the watch in my hand. You can see the Maltese cross motif is a sort of Vacheron monogram that runs down the center. There's a taper to the links. You can see they're polished outboard. There's a rolled bevel on the side. The interiors of the links are individually micro-polished, which is impressive. Every single link in the bracelet on both sides of the bracelet is removable for fine-tuning the fit. And as you can see, there is an intermediate-sized link in there, 
plus these sleeved extensible adjustments. So you have two 1.5 millimeter telescoping micro adjustments inside the clasp, just like that. Sorry, sometimes plastic gets in the way. It's actually quite a secure clasp. And then it's just a wonderfully tailorable bracelet that nicely counterbalances the watch since the watch is quite heavy. Popping off the bracelet, taking a look out back. What I find most impressive about the Generation 3 Overseas is that it is simultaneously the first in-house caliber overseas, the first display case back overseas, the first Geneva Hallmark overseas. And it's not just the Ponsant de Genève on the movement, you can see it's on the case as well. This is the twin barrel automatic caliber 5200, vertical clutch column wheel, 22 karat quadruple finished compass rose style winding rotor. It's got a 52 hour power reserve, a 4 hertz beat rate, five position adjustment, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. You can see the decoration is quite becoming of a watch of this stature. And it's more durable than you think, as it's 150 meters water resistant and 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic. Now that is a chronograph. A more rarefied and exclusive overseas debuted as you see it here in 2020. This is the overseas Perpetual Calendar Ultra Thin Skeleton. So this watch now, ultra thin, at just over eight millimeters thick, just over 41 millimeters in diameter, super slender with a skeletonized dial side complications module, visible to the world underneath a second sapphire. The watch has plenty of loom and it's actually one of the few skeleton watches that's fairly easy to read day or night perpetual calendar, so it can deal with irregular length months as well as leap years. Take a look at the metal parts, the springs, the levers, the jumpers, the wheels underneath the dial. The finish is exquisite. Now this one too features two accessory straps and it has the same quick release system for the bracelet, which I will demonstrate here. Taking a look on the underside, nickel anthracite coating on Vacheron Caliber 1120. This is based on the JLC 920 Abouch, which was developed exclusively for the Holy Trinity in 1967 and only ever used by Patek, Vacheron, and AP. So it has a ring that runs all the way around the rotor with the mass on one side. You can see that the rotor has been skeletonized, interior beveled with the Maltese cross. The movement's entirely skeletonized, so you can see straight down to the drivetrain and into the mainspring barrel. 40-hour power reserve, 19,800 vibration per hour beat rate. We have a free-sprung Gyromax style balance. You can see the Geneva hallmark on both the movement and the case. Note the absence of Cote de Genève across these skeletonized bridges. They're satinated on their tops, and then they're mirror beveled on their insides. You can also appreciate the use of a 22 karat mass here. And of course, it is still anti-magnetic to 25,000 ampere per meter, making this ultra thin perpetual calendar an exceptionally versatile companion. We also have the other features that you loved on the chronograph, including the sleeved micro adjustments and the fully sizable all removable link bracelet. Okay, now we will take a look at a chronograph from Angelus. Once upon a time, Angelus was all about chronographs, calendar watches, and calendar watches that were also chronographs. This is the Angelus Chronodate, and it's interesting because when Angelus was revived for the 2015 model year, it was revived as a brand that focused on Torbion, and Torbion were its specialty straight through the 2022 launch of this, which takes Angelus back to its chronograph roots. Now, of course, Angelus is the ultra boutique brand under manufacturer La Joux Pere, which is itself a property of Citizen Watch of Japan. This is a Swiss watch but with Citizen Watch money, Angelus will always be around to provide parts and service. Now, you know its sister brand, it's larger but still small sister brand, Arnold & Son. Well, if Arnold & Son is 700 to 1,000 watches a year, Angelus is going to be 70 to about 100, so exclusivity is high. This is a 42.5 millimeter grade 5 titanium case that has a canister holding the movement in the dial that's made of carbon fiber inside. The watch features no shortage of luminescence. And then true to its name, it's a chronograph with a date. We will make sure that we're in hacking seconds mode. Get out of the date change danger zone. Demonstrate the pointer style date and its quick set. The watch features a La Joux Pere caliber that is based on the 
ageless Velju 7750, but you can see it's been upgraded in a few ways. First, the finishing is entirely unique and highly stylized. Second, you can see that this one's been converted to use a column wheel instead of the common 7750 coulisse or cam system. We still have the oscillating pinion lateral clutch. Power reserve goes from 42 hours on a standard 7750 to 60 in this application, and you can see that it is individually numbered. This is number five in the series. We'll throw it on my wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, and it wears nicely. It's big, though. It's broad across the wrist. So I'm going to say you want a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to wear this watch. It's not terribly thick, though, so if it fits on your watch side to side, you should have no trouble fitting it underneath the cuff. I like independent brands, especially when they do technically innovative things. Armin Strom, which was originally known for skeletonization and engraving, has, since 2009, emerged as a formidable manufacturer that offers extensive customization on its watches across many unique and exclusive calibers. So what we have here is the Armin and Strom Pure Mirrored Force Resonance. So the Pure version came out in 2019. The original Mirrored Force came out in 2017. So this is a 2019 to present model. And you're looking at the Pure Manufacture Edition here with the darkened bridges and the blue dials. Now, it is a resonance watch, but not like F.P. Journe's. F.P. Journe's watch works like a traditional resonance watch, or as he would say, a real resonance watch, because there's no physical link between the two balances and escapements. Armin Strom did something different. They used the stud holder of the hairspring to link the two sides. So you can see how the hairspring stud is pinned to each side of the spring. And so as the hairsprings apply force and oscillate, these two sides will synchronize to each other because of physical connection between the hairspring studs. Whereas on a conventional resonance watch, it's the parasitic emanations from friction that ultimately cause the synchronization. This is a lot more interesting to look at, though admittedly controversial, because by linking the two sides, you minimize the traditional resonance effect. So yes, they're synchronized and they will stay synchronized, but it's not quite as magic as Jorn's system. What it is, is a lot more spectacular to look at. Finish is good. As you can see on the edges of the bridges, they're rounded and mirrored. We have stripes across the bridges. We have blue dials, including a concentric pattern and a sunburst. Dial side bolts, black polished screws here. There's engine turning at the base of the mono bridge for the two balances. They beat away at a quirky 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate. And you can see they have variable inertia bolts in their rims to adjust the fine timing of the watch. Twin mainspring barrels, skeletonized. And you can see the ratchet wheels, for example, internally beveled and satinated on their tops. Case back finishing is good, especially along the bevel of the center bridge. You have a 48 to 50 hour manual wind power reserve. You can see the watch has a five ATM water resistance. In steel, it's 42 millimeters in diameter. And it is considerably smaller and thinner as well relative to the original mirrored force resonance. This one's a 42 to the original's 43.4. And this is about 12.5 to the original's greater than 13 millimeters thick. A lovely watch, a really cool and dynamic use of the resonance phenomenon. And of course, the watch comes from Armin Strom, which is a plucky independent, making it quite likable from my perspective. They're realistic about how people wear their watches, offering high horology and steel and with full rubber straps. Just a cool brand that makes interesting and worthwhile movements that are finished nicely and technically audacious in design. Let us talk about Resence, another audacious independent, one of the few companies that's done something truly original in the watch space. No one ever built a time display like this before Resence did. Resence was created back in 2010. The first watches started shipping in 2011. And what you see here is a 2021 model year only watch. So not limited to a specific number, but limited by the virtue of a single year's production and then no more. This is the Resence Type 1 Slim Red. The Type 1 Slim bowed at SIHH 2019, replacing the previous ETA 2824 with the 2892, which is about a millimeter thinner than the 2824. So what you have here is a measured 10.8 millimeter thickness, a 42 millimeter lenticular grade 5 titanium case, and the dial is expansive on this crownless watch. The bezel's barely there. We have the hours, minutes, and seconds. We have a day of the week indicator. So this watch, which features a rotating planetary display, is also technically a regulator. 
Being a Resence, it's also surprisingly well loomed, and you can see there's no shortage. Now, about setting and winding the watch. The 2017 Type 1 Squared introduced the case back lever that made winding and setting this watch a whole lot easier. It is automatic. You don't necessarily have to wind it if you wear it every day, but if you wish to wind it, you can use the case back. And it's just a pleasure to play with this watch. I could distract myself through hours of boring meetings playing with this watch. Taking a quick look, I'll show you how you read it. Right now it is 9 a.m on Friday. How do I know that? Well, you can see it's nine hours and minutes. Now take a look at the day of the week indicator. It moves in a clockwise direction. So that's Saturday and that's Sunday. So we're looking at the arc before the weekend. So that's Friday. And we're looking at the first half of the arc. So you know it is 9 a.m. the first half of the day. 36 hour power reserved has the Resence ROCS 1.3 module, which is 107 parts and 15 joules. On top of the ETA base, Resence has created its own secondary movement, which is a big reason why you buy a Resence, the original engineering and watchmaking on top of the ETA. It's also a wonderful watch if you want a Swiss-themed watch. The red and the white really works. Of course, Resence watches designed in Belgium, built in Switzerland, have a little bit of both countries in them. Super slim, short across the wrist, just 48 millimeters, and it doesn't wear like a 42. It wears more like a 40 if you want a general notion of how it fits. Grunefeld, out of Oldenzaal in the Netherlands. They want you to know that while they respect your admiration for the brand, they are not taking orders. Fortunately, I have an example of one of their most sought discontinued models, the 8 Seconds Remontoire. It won the Men's Watch Prize at the GPHG back in 2000, and I believe it was 17 they won, even though the watch came out in 2016. Now, it also went out of production around 2019 when the last of the orders were taken for the model. Grunefeld makes many dial and case variations on the 1941 Remontoire, but they only made 188 movements, so that will remain the total constructed. The watch has a sterling silver dial that's been frosted with black polished and faceted indices. It's covered with a sort of rhodium to give it a sparkling shine. We have fire blued steel alpha hands at center, and then a metallic track for the seconds. The watch features two prominent dial distinctions, one of which is this black polished bridge for the counterweight of the remontoire system, and then the other is the center seconds of the sub-register, which actually has a hacking function, surprisingly rare on high-end watches. The watch is just over 47 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and 39.5 millimeters in diameter. 1941 in the name of the watch describes the size and shape of the case, and you can see it is a quite elaborate shape. On the back, caliber GF05, stainless steel bridges triple finished with media blasted recesses, satin channels along their edge, and if you look carefully, you can see there's mirrored beveling on the edge of every one of these steel bridges. You can see the mechanism, both the locking system and the wheel and tensioner that underpin the remontoire. The barrel, which has a 35-hour power reserve and a stop works, will re-energize the remontoire every eight seconds. So it's the remontoire spring that actually drives the escapement rather than the barrel directly. So for the 30, five hours this watch is running. It maintains constant amplitude and thus it can be regulated to keep excellent time. Look at all the black polished steel on the back of this movement. It's everything that's turning black as I move it through the light. Take a look at the solarization on that ratchet wheel atop the barrel as well as the mirror well surrounding the binding screw. Also important to note the stop works. I hinted at it earlier. It will stop the watch rather than allow the watch to keep bad time because it's easier to notice your watch has stopped than to notice your watch is starting to lose seconds or minutes. That's why the stop works has a firm preference for stopping the watch rather than keeping an accurate time. We've got a free sprung balance here and if you look carefully the bridges are shaped like the roofs of traditional Dutch bell gable houses. A nod to the Dutch origins of the Grunefeld brothers as well as the location in Oldenzaal of their studio. Finally note the use of the little golden chaton cups to hold the pivot jewels, a lovely and loving nod to the pocket watch era. We'll throw this watch on my wrist, and you can see being 39.5 and short across the wrist, as well as quite thin, it wears beautifully. A lovely piece, and one of the most fascinating technical achievements by the Grunefelds. It's universally wearable, highly sought, long since sold out, and beautifully made. So what comes last? What could possibly upstage that? Well, what if I told you about a watch 
multiply complicated from a great brand that costs less than half of its original retail price, well then you would have the 188 piece Blancpain Le Mans Tourbillon Semanier Grande Date. This is a 2006 model year limited edition of 188 pieces in red gold, only 40 millimeters in diameter. It's a super short, roughly 45 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, meaning even a tiny wrist can wear this combination power reserve, day date, pointer date, big date, flying tourbillon, and yes, you better believe it has a seven to eight day power reserve, depending on where the calendar turnover is on that seventh day. The watch is extraordinary, beautifully made, with a flying tourbillon designed for Blancpain by Vincent Calabrese. Yes, the famed independent watchmaker created this design. And being a flying tourbillon, there's no upper bridge to block your view. You can see the tourbillon carriage has been mirror polished with beveled edges and black finished screws. It acts as a second sub-register. The watch includes a pointer style date, a double digit date, plenty of loom, in fact, a surprising amount of loom. Note, even sub-register hands are luminescent. The watch also features an unexpected tandem of a screw-down crown and a 100-meter water resistance rating. So you've got enough autonomy to put this watch down for a week and it's still running. The movement is credibly finished and beautifully embellished with a combination of engine turning, stripes, a rotor that's made of white gold, an entirely freehand skeletonized and engraved, so no two are exactly alike. You can see the beveling is impressive, as is the finishing of the screw heads. Flipping it over real quick, you could see solarization on the ratchet wheel, a polished swan's neck style click spring suitable for a pocket watch, solarization on the crown wheel core, satination on the wheels, and you could see in the jewel recesses we also have a partridge eye beveling, so deeply impressive stuff. On the dial we have that pointer date, we have the day, we have the, well this is actually a pointer week, I'm sorry, it is the Semanier after all, so this is a pointer week indicator. So you've got your day, your month, your date, and then your power reserve indicator. Surprisingly, the power reserve indicator does include luminescence, but you get a full seven days plus of power reserve in an automatic winding watch with real world water resistance. Again, 100 meters. This is designed to be used. Finished to auto logerie standards, this watch originally retailed for $146,000. Today, mid to high 60s, pre-owned from Watchbox with all of the trimmings, boxes, papers. A really cool way to get into the absolute apex of luxury watchmaking for less than people would pay for a steel Nautilus. This is my favorite watch on today's show, and I'm not normally a red gold guy. Get people, reach out. All these watches are for sale. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.